Okay, good day everyone. So for today, I'll be discussing information technology, the internet, and you. These are the different competencies that we will be discussing through this chapter. So the first one is explain the five parts of information system, which is people, procedure, software, hardware, and data. Distinguish between system software and application software. Discuss the three kinds of system software programs and distinguish between basic and specialized application software. Identify the four types of computers and the six types of microcomputers. Describe the different types of computer, include uh, computer hardware, including system unit, input, output, storage, and communication devices. Define data and describe document, worksheet, database, and presentation files. Explain computer connectivity and wireless revolution including internet, smartphone, and cloud computing. So, we need to learn basic of computers because information systems are involved in many of our everyday life. Microcomputers are common in all areas of life in which the most common example is our cell phone. So, new forms of learning online provide alternatives for people to become educated without attending physical, pl physical class. And that is how we adapt to new normal. The web provides new ways to communicate, to find people with similar interests, and to purchase goods. So, online shopping, SNS, tweeters. So, those are examples of web applications. So... Parts of an information system. There are five parts of information system, which is people, procedure, and software. But before that, let me, de let me define what is an information system. When we say system, these are different parts that act as one to create an output. When we say information system, it is a combination of people, procedure, software, hardware and data for collecting, storing, and processing information. So, information system is basically used to process data to create information. So, the first part of information system is people. People is considered as the most important part of any system. Don't, uh, don't be mistaken, guys. When we say information system, baka ang alam lang po natin is uh, computer lang po siya. Hindi po. When we say information system, it includes the user. So, when we are dealing with people, we have two types of contact which is direct and indirect so when we say direct that is by oral communication face to face and we have indirect by using different applications so there are different uh, user, uh, uses of computer it may be entertainment business medicine or education in entertainment watching video is an example in business, we have the online shopping. In med medicine, we have the different equipments used in hospitals. Basically, we have the um, x-ray, uh, the ECG. So, those are examples of computer uses in medicine. Then, we also have the education. We have different platforms online that is used for education. The very basic example is the LMS or Learning Management System, NIO LMS. So next is software. What is a software? Software are instructions given to the computer. So software is another uh, another term for programs. They are commonly known as programs. So there are two categories of software. That is the system software and the application software. 
So, system software. System software are a collection of programs which includes operating system, utilities, and device drivers. So, basically, a system software enables application software to interact with the computer hardware. It serves as an interface between the user and the computer para mas mapadali po yung pag-interact po natin sa computer po natin. So, these are background software that helps manage resources. So, operating system is the most common uh, system software that manage resources po natin. It coordinates computer resources, provides user interface, and runs application. So, the most common example of operating system includes Windows and Mac OS. So, we also have utilities. Utilities includes this defragmenter, uh, backup and restore. So, those are utilities. Then, we have the device drivers which allows communications between the different parts of our computer. In short, device drivers is the one that carries information from one point to another point in our computer. Next is the application software. So application software is considered as the end user software. So there are two major categories of application software which is basic and specialized. So for this basic, these are the generalized application. Examples of such is the most common applications that we use which is Microsoft Word. Then we also have the specialized application. These are for specific use. Examples of Adobe Photoshop, um, AutoCAD, SketchUp. Those are examples of specialized application. So let's go to hardware as part of our information system. So there are different types of computers. So we have the supercomputer, the mini computer, and the micro computers. So for the supercomputer, that is the most powerful special high capacity computers used in very large corporations. This is the fastest among the different types of computers. Then we have the mainframe computers capable of great processing speed and data storage and occupy specially wired air conditioned rooms in companies. Then we also have the mini computers known as the mid range computers. These mini computers are as large as a refrigerator. So used in medium sized companies or departments in large companies. Then lastly, the microcomputers. The least powerful but the most widely used and fastest growing type of computers. These microcomputers, it also includes handheld computers or our smartphones. So these are different types of micro microcomputers. So first is the desktop computers. Desktop computers are small enough to fit on top or alongside a desk, yet too big to carry around. We also have media, uh, media center system units that is used for entertainment. It blurs the line between desktop computers and dedicated entertainment device. So these are for media. Example is Pigeons. So, notebook or laptop computers. So, these are commonly used because of the portable and lightweight characteristic. It fit into most briefcases po natin or bags. Similar to notebook computers but smaller and lighter and less expensive, these are the netbooks. So, the difference between notebook and netbook is the specification. The netbook has a, small, uh, has a lower specification than that of the notebook. So, almost the same lang po sila. The only difference is mas maliit po ang display ng netbooks kaysa sa notebooks po natin. And at the same time, the storage capacity is 
lower. Next is the tablet PC. So, a tablet PC allows you to enter data and select commands using a pen stylus. So, handwritten data is digitalized. Then, last one is the handheld. Smallest computing devices in our microcomputer. It combines pen input, writing recognition, personal organization tools, and communications. So, these are the four basic categories of equi equipment, namely the system unit, the input or input-output or I.O. devices, the secondary storage, and communication. So, the system unit houses most of the electronic component in our computer. It houses two important components, with this, which is the microprocessor and the memory. The microprocessor is known by CPU, processor, uh, micro P. So those are the term for our microprocessor. Then we also have the memory. The memory holds data currently being processed. So for the microprocessor, it is considered as the brain of the computer. For the memory, it, it serves as the working table of our con computer. It holds the process information before it is output. But take note, temporary storage contents are lost when power is off. Then that is the so-called volatile storage. So, I.O. devices po natin. So, input devices translate what we understand into a form that the computer can process. Take note that the language that the computer understands is different from the language that we understand. So, input devices translate what we understand. Kung ano yung naiintindihan natin, itra-translate niya sa naiintindihan ng computer. Then, we also have the output devices. Translate what the computer can understand into a form, uh, what the computer can process into a form that we can understand. Ibig sabihin po, kung ano yung pre-process ni computer or kung ano yung naiintindihan ni computer, itra-translate niya po sa naiintindihan dapat natin. And that is output device. Secondary storage. So, it holds data and programs even if the power is off. Then, that is the so-called permanent storage. Example ng secondary storage natin is hard disk, solid-state storage, and optical disk. So, the hard disk, there are two types of hard disk, which is the external and internal. The external po natin, yan po yung sinasaksak po natin with enclosure. While the internal, yan po yung nakikita, nakikita nyo sa computer nyo na local disk C or local disk D. Sir, dalawa naman po ang nakikita namin doon. No, isa lang po yung hard disk ng computer sa loob niya. That is only partition. Kung baga, iisang building, nilagyan lang ng kwarto. So, solid state storage has no, no, no moving parts. Example of solid states natin is memory cards and USB drives. Sir, what do you mean na no moving parts? Napapansin nyo siguro sa optical disk, yung, kung naabutan nyo pa yung mga CD, mga DVD, di ba umiikot po yun? Sa solid state po, hindi po, wala po siyang gumagalaw na component. Sir, sa hard disk, wala naman po kami nakikita umiikot. Meron pong dislike or disk platter sa loob po ng hard disk po natin. The next, we have the optical disc. It uses laser technology to read the content. Yung sa optical disc po natin, meron po siyang tinatawag na lands and pits. Kumbaga, on that optical disc, may mga uka-uka po siya. Parang kumbaga is may paloob, may pataas. Parang, parang alam niyo yung square waves. Parang ganun po ang optical disk. So, pag nag-save ka ng data, lalagyan niya ng uka yun. Hindi natin napapansin kasi maliit lang po yun. 
So CDs and DVDs. We have compact disc and digital versatile disc. We also have the Blu-ray disc or the BD. Then communications. Communication devices such as modem provide microcomputers with the ability to communicate with other computer systems. So modems modify information so that it may be sent and received across telephone or cable lines. So data. This is the last one. Last part of information system. Data are raw and processed facts. Then processed data becomes information. Okay, I'll give you an example. We have Juan de la Cruz is an information. That is a name of a person. Juan is a data. De la Cruz is a data. If you combine them together, it will become an information pertaining to a certain person, Juan de la Cruz. Digital data is stored electronically in files. So we have different files. That is the document, worksheet, database, and presentation. So document files are created by word processors. Examples of word uh, of documents are term papers, memos, and letters. We also have the worksheet files. It is created by electronic spreadsheets to analyze things like budgets and to predict sales. Then we also have database files, typically created by database management programs to contain highly structured and organized data. So database is an electronic representation of a file cabinet. Alam niyo yung file cabinet? Di ba lalagyan yun ng mga information? So ganun, dun, ganun din po ang database files. Yung sa file cabinet na yun, nakasorted po ang data. The same with database files. And lastly, we have presentation files. Presentation files are created by presentation graphics programs to prepare presentation materials. Can contain audience, handouts, speakers, and notes. Then lastly, we have connectivity and wireless revolution. What is connectivity? Connectivity is the process of sharing information from one person to another via communication medium which is our computers we have also wireless communication that is by using the internet or the so-called cloud computing we also have computer networks computer networks are com connected communication system of computers so ano po ibig sabihin nun? let's say for example Sa loob ng bahay nyo, nakakonek ka sa wifi, nakakonek si mama mo, nakakonek si papa mo. So, you are connected to each other and those um, computers are networked together. So, ang tawag po sa kanila, computer networks. So, yung cloud computing po natin, it uses the internet and the web as a platform for communication. And that's all. Thank you.